Oh, wasn't that beautiful? That was Shonda Birch. She's a part of our team. Um, she's on staff and obviously part of the music team as well. As I was talking to Shonda earlier this week, actually without really realizing that she was uh, our special guest this morning, and she was talking about how much she misses the singing and, and the fellowship in the music. So, so um, we just embrace her with all of that, don't we? <laughs> we just embrace all of it, all of us with that. And uh, Roderick, thank you for that, that prayer. I, I kind of felt just like saying amen, service is done, right? <laughs> but the word that stood out to me out of all of those beautiful words, if we would just do it, if we would just do it, we know, we know what is ours to do, but we get caught up here and we get caught up with this and that and the other thing, right? But feel that presence of God. I should have, you know, if we could rewind this and we were actually recording not live, I would change the order a little bit and I would have you start right here and then I would follow right in there. So, so I have a dream. I have a dream. Martin Luther King had a dream 55 years ago. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and the flesh shall see it together, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty we are free at last. Martin Luther King could be saying those same words today. And I have a dream. I have a dream that new humanity actually bursts. I have a dream that it doesn't take another 55 years or another century that we all know our oneness with God, with each other. I have a dream that there is no more racial divide, that there is no more violence and injustice, that there is no more human trafficking, that there is no more hunger and lack and limitation, that we come as a humanity into the oneness we are here to make manifest, from the oneness that we are here to fully realize, not in 55 years, not in 100 years, but right now, today, because the more of us that realize it today, the more apt that we'll be able to just do it, just do it, just do it, and become it. And in this world today, we need this. I just find it so fascinating. Maybe you do too. The events of the world, the events of our nation, the events that are happening right now as we're celebrating the Martin Luther King Jr. Day. A couple of weeks, we kick into our season for nonviolence, and then we're in Black History Month, and it's just like, it's like the pot is all stirred up. Maybe, maybe this is the year. Maybe this is the year we get it right. Maybe this is the year that we can integrate it in such a way individually because it has to happen here first. That we can become it as a world. Martin Luther King's, Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter, Reverend Bernice King. That was a little bit of a mouthful. <laughs> I had to think. <laughs> Said this week that we can't skip justice and get to peace. And then I started looking at, you know, the famous speech and some of the other things that Martin Luther King spoke and, and is really famous for. There's, you know, so much, there's so much. I was like, how do I limit <laughs> what I want to say today? How do I pull the best of the best of the best for this moment in time? But there was over again and again and again, he was calling us, and I say us, to nonviolence, calling us to justice, calling us to stand in the face of whatever storm was going on out here and find it here, and to trust and 
to have faith and to put feet on our prayers non-violently, right? Violence is not the answer. And so as we're sort of our whole nation is, is kind of in up arms, you know, around preparing for violence. There was in my uh, minister's discussion page, I have this fabulous resource called Unity Minister's Discussion. It's primarily Unity Ministers who are serving churches and we are very real there right? Very real about how do we stand and how do we talk about the things we need to talk about and how do we move forward in our body of unity, right? Teaching, but not only teaching, integrating the principles that we've been teaching for 140 years. But there was one post yesterday that was like, do you know that the UCC church is asking their people to stay home? Now, most of the churches are virtual anyway, but like us, we've got a, a, a crew here in the building because of fear of violence. And I went, wow, wow. It just, it just, it just hit me. And I've been trying to stay away from the news for a few days just because I like to take a break now and again call it fasting <laughs> or resting or self-care. <laughs> but, I, but I happened to watch the news last night and I've just, it's like it just, you know, every now and again, it just, it, it just hits me at like, oh, 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 the state of the world. And, and yet we are called to peace. But it's not, let's say what peace is and then let's say what it's not. Well, let's say what it's not first. What, this is what we're not called to do necessarily today. We're not called to join together in the Unity Church and hold hands and sing Kubaya. Right? Well, we can't hold hands. <laughs> and we can't be in the church building. And Kumbaya isn't it. Right? But what we are called to do is to find that presence of peace. We're not called to gloss over it, to spiritually bypass what's happening in the world, which we're pretty good at in unity. But we want to really use this time for the greater good. We, wanna, we don't want to miss this moment in time. Like, what if this is the moment that everything begins to turn? What if this is the moment that we're called individually to do our own inner work, to do our own inner healing, to look again, to take it again, and in the midst, find that peace. Martin Luther King said that true peace is not just the absence of tension. It is the presence of justice. It is not just the absence of tension. It is the presence. It is the presence. I did a couple years ago, we did a book tour. I have several books. We're going to talk about one of my books um, next week because we're going to do spirit circles on it. But um, my second book is called Paradox of Awakening, and I'm not really talking about it today. However, I should have given Jennifer and Melissa a heads up. It is on Bookshop. But the subtitle is Finding Peace in a World of Chaos. And so uh, this morning in my office, um, Tammy and Rob and I just pulled our cards. I've got little uh, a deck of cards. Those are not on Bookshop, but they are in the bookstore. And the one I pulled is, given what is, what can you do to find peace in your being in this moment? I went, dang, that's like my talk. <laughs> given what is, what can you do to find peace in your being in this moment. But a couple of years ago, when that book came out, we did a book tour. Rob and I did a book tour. We, were, we uh, bought an RV, and we uh, bought an RV in Arizona, and our sort of kind of very first, well, our very first trip out was um, about, I don't know, seven miles from home, maybe. You know, so we, so we had a practice run. And then we went out, uh, so first time driving, I, I'm the primary driver. I'm like, oh, I like my little convertible. I'm like, okay, so we leave Phoenix to go to Orlando, our first trip. Finding peace in chaos, we got to practice it. 
<laughs> but peace is not about waiting till the outer world is perfect. Peace is about finding peace in the midst of chaos. Peace is about the peace that passes understanding. So here's a little um, peace I want to share with you. Peace, not uh, P-I-E-C-E, not P-E-A-C-E, but P-E-A, anyway, you got it. If you can start the day without caffeine, if you can always be cheerful in ignoring aches and pains, if you can resist complaining and boring people with your troubles, if you can eat the same food every day and be grateful for it, if you can understand when your loved ones are too busy to give you any time, if you can take criticism and blame without resentment, if you can conquer tension without medical help, if you can relax without alcohol, if you can sleep without the aid of dr drugs, then you are probably the family dog. <laughs> you would thought I was going to say the awakened one, right? Yeah, no, you're probably the family dog if you can do all that. Jesus talks about peace. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. Jesus says, peace be still. But when did Jesus say, peace be still? Do you remember? It was when he was calming the water. So he was in the boat with the disciples. They'd had a busy day. They'd out, been out teaching all day long, and there were crowds, and there was all the stuff of the world. And he said to the disciples, he said, let's get in the boat, and let's go out. And there was a storm brewing. But Jesus went out, and he laid down in the boat, and he fell asleep. And the disciples saw this storm coming, felt that storm coming. They began to worry for their lives. The winds were so high, and the waves were so high. They're like, ah, help. And they wake Jesus up and they say, what, what, help, don't you even care that we're going to perish out here? And Jesus looked at him and says, oh, geez, or something like that. <laughs> oy vey, probably oy vey. I've been teaching you all along and you don't even get it yet. And he stands up in the boat and he comes up to the front and he says to the winds and the waves, he says, peace be still. And the wind stopped, and the waves calmed. And the disciple said, who is this? Who is this man who can calm the storm? But when we look at that metaphysically, Jesus is the Christ in us, the I am, the very presence of God in us. The disciples are our mental faculties, our spiritual faculties. Our disciples run amok. Our disciples inside of us get caught up with the news and the, uh, everything out there. And we think once everything out there is better, I'll be better. But we have it backwards. And so we can take this story, this miracle, if you will, and apply it to ourselves. What if the waves, the storm, the winds is only our emotional body? And what if we have the capacity to rise up in the Christ presence within us, to access that point of God that is within us, and say to ourselves, peace, be still. Take a breath. Exhale. Oh. Because that's a practice. That's a spiritual principle, and we get to practice it. And we get to practice it, and we get to practice it, and we get to practice it. And when we become that presence of peace, regardless of what's going on in the outer, then we stand in a place that nothing can disturb the calm peace of our soul. And when we stand in that place, truly, then we can radiate that peace. And when we connect with others who are doing the same, it is as if a blanket of peace can wash over our world. It's powerful, and it's what we're called to do. 
But back to the disciples in the boat, who is this man? I have another joke. Jesus was up in heaven one day, taking a break from earth, wandering around, checking on everybody. He came, and he saw Mother Teresa, and he's like checking on her. How's she doing? She's busy with her friends. She's uh, having a good time over there. She goes, he's, she's fine. And he keeps going, and he goes, and he finds Martin Luther King. He says, how are you doing today? He's like, oh, I'm having a blast, having fun with my buddies. All is well up here in heaven. Everything's good. He's on his way to go find John the Baptist, and he comes across this man who's crying. And Jesus says to this crying man, what are you doing? This is heaven. You can't be crying. You're going to ruin the mood. He says, but really, what's going on? He goes, I can't find him. He goes, what are you talking about? He goes, I can't find him. I figured finally, finally I get to heaven. I would finally find him. And he says, what? What? Tell me more. And the man says, when I was down on earth, I was a carpenter, and I had this little boy, and I loved him with all my heart. And when he grew up, I wanted him to go into the family business with me. But then when he turned about 30, he went off with this flock of guys. I think there was about 12 of them on some kind of adventure. And then he died. He died, for goodness sake. I don't, I don't know. I just thought that once I got up here, I, I, I. And Jesus is so moved. And he's got tears running down his face. He says, Father, I have missed you so. And the man says, Pinocchio? That almost needed a one of those, right? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> there's sound in the sanctuary here if you can't hear it. <laughs> I, I just couldn't help it, you know. I'm known for my bad jokes. You got it, you know. You got it. You got to mix it up a little bit, right? Martin Luther King says nonviolence is about the absolute commitment to the way of love. Love is not emotional bash. It is not empty sentimentalism. It is the active outpouring of one's whole being into the being of another. Jesus taught us love, love, love. Love is the way. Not a superficial, emotional, personal love, but the very presence of love. We know that love is that presence and power that is God. From 1 John, it says, if you know love, you know God, because God is love and love is God. If you know God, you know love, because it's all the same. When we open ourselves to be that presence of love would be the presence of peace. When we open ourselves to loving from that place of being, then we discover this beautiful love. I'm a part of a group called the One Million Meditators, and they've put together this short video. I want to share it with you. Their motto, their intention is to get a million people meditating at the same time, and they've got medi group global meditations every three or four months. And their motto has been for years, I love myself and I love the planet. So let's share this video.
What are you called to do? What are you called to be? Perhaps peace is the cause you can stand for. Perhaps love is the cause you can stand for. We are called up so bigly right now. We are called up so boldly right now. How can we stand for a new dream, for a new humanity? How can we be that presence of peace on the planet? How can we be the emanation of love for all things? How can we bridge what we're calling the great divide, right? How can we bridge that with the spiritual truth principles that we know, that we love? How can we activate that peace within us, that love within us? We need to activate it. That, that's actually, I said, how do you activate it? That is how you activate it. You find it, you activate it. And you begin anew. You begin anew every single day. You look with the eyes of a new being. You look with new eyes. Over this last year, I have seen things I've heard about for years but had never really seen before with the injustices and the, the violences and the rage, especially against our black brothers and sisters, our people of color, all kinds of color as Roderick prayed in the beautiful prayer. Activate your sense of oneness with humanity, every single person. Activate your sense of oneness with our planet Earth. That's what we're called to do. That's what we're called to be. And when we do that, things will change. Now you think, you might think you're doing a pretty good job of it, but my friend Ellen posted this post um, earlier this week, and we'll put that slide up now. And she's challenging us to this. Your capacity to allow people to live a truth completely opposite to yours without shutting off your compassion for them is a reflection of how powerful your love is. And in that calling, that's exactly what we're called to do. We're called to allow people humanity, regardless of our differences, and allow ourselves to love them without shutting ourselves down, without shutting off our compassion for them. Now, I'm talking about the essence of people, right? I'm not talking about actions in the world. That's where you need justice, is actions. But when we can keep our compassion open and stretch. It's a daily practice every single day. I posted that post because I wanted to see reactions from my colleagues and my friends, and some of them were like, yes, 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 and some of them were like, ooh, that's tough. And some of them were like, ah, I'm being called out, right? But it's all good because if we are ever evolving, and if we're here to ever evolve, this is the type of work that we get to do. Open your heart. Let the compassion you have for people break your heart. Let it mess with your mind because you don't understand. And choose love anyway. And choose love anyway. And choose peace again and again and again. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And we take just a moment in meditation. Close your eyes. Feel the words of that last quote from Martin Luther King. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Feel the light that is spirit in you, like flipping a light switch on. Imagine yourself in your life, in your world, and it feels dark. And sometimes you can't even find that light switch, but allow this moment in time, that spirit that is within you and greater than you flips that switch. Feel that light illuminating your heart, 
illuminating your mind, illuminating your world. Feel that light emanating out from you as you over the planet. In that light, discover love. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Feel that love like a bubble, like a presence, like a fountain deep within your being, filling your body, your mind, your heart, your soul. We emanate love. And in the light and in the peace we activate, in the light, in the love, we activate the peace, the peace that passes understanding, the peace that is a fundamental quality of being within your soul. Activate that peace. And as we join together, every one of us, feel that collective, And simply expand. It's not about sending it out. Just expand it. Expand it. Through all people watching. Through all people participating. Expand it across our country and around our globe. Feel that peace that passes understanding. That is a gift from spirit itself. So we activate it, we lift it, and we gift it to the universe. Feel that peace encircling the globe, coming all the way right back around and landing in and on and through and as you. We'll do a longer meditation immediately following the service, but for right now, feel that I am peace. I choose peace. I am light. I choose light. I am love. I choose love. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, we say, and so it is, and so we let it be.